G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg. Sorry, the sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. Today we're getting stuck into the floor. We're ripping off the old paint. And we're gonna have a bit of a blast. Remember this list? So we started with this top bit and we kind of got a fair bit of that middle bit done. And now we're on to this bottom But we've bit. done the top, but look, there's a cross there. No, it's definitely, yeah, yeah, it's pretty but, final. All right, there is a bit of work there for yeah. on painting. But we're on to this bottom list. Yeah. Look, it's got the word clear galley. Ooh. <laughs> so, oh. this is what we're up to. Yeah, so we did a little bit of this one. Uh, down to, where are we? <laughs> <laughs> that much. That bit is what we've got left to do so far. Have a little close up. Yeah. Have a little read. Right. Just a note, if you're after bikini clad anyone, this is not the right channel for you. <laughs> if you're after perfect spick editing and gorgeous sunsets all the time, champers on the back of a boat, definitely not for you guys. We're building a trawler, it's hard work. We're almost at the end of it, but this is the big job that we were really avoiding for a long time because <laughs> it's so hard. If you're here to watch a couple of people slug out building a trawler that almost gets the upper hand almost every day <laughs> and how much hard work it really is and the wind and the rain and the blasting and the no money and the bad health and the all of that, well, we're for you. Now that we've got the ribs out, we can sort of see what we're left with. So it's not too bad, like it looks like you know deep surface thrust, but it's actually pretty shallow. Um, that'll clean up really nice. Um, this one here hardly even touches the rim, and you see on the bottom there the rim sort of rusted away a wee bit, so all of that will be blasted so that we can make sure we've got bare steel bare white metal when we're working. Um, but we've also cut away these areas and you can see it allows us access to basically right underneath the deck. That's the and that's thing. why we wanted to do it. You see that one there. There's just um, rust and garbage and all sorts of stuff that we have to deal with. I just want to dig into that little bit there because I want to see how deep that goes. So yes, there's no way we would be able to get to that easily if we left those um, edges in. So they were always going to come out so that we can make sure that that is sort of dealt with. It's so easy for something like this to hide when you can't access it, eh? It's all about access. Sounds hard, doesn't it? Yeah, it's pretty solid, eh? Yeah, it's a pretty solid. Cool. Bubbly surface crack. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that's all. That is really good news, but that's the question problem. is, how did that happen? That's what I want to know. Yeah, I just think it's bad paint. I think they yeah? painted it properly. For what, and years. condensation or something? Yeah, condensation. You, you don't think it's like a, a little pinhole or something? That's, that's really good sign. Basically, because this is such a hard area to maintain, because you have these flaps over here, um, I just don't think they've ever painted it properly. I remember when we painted it, it was an absolute mission with little mirrors and all sorts. It's all surfing. Yeah. Nah, that's all good, eh? That's really cool. I was worried about that corner, but that looks really great. So Honey, I don't think this is bad as we thought it was. Well, it just carries on with your archaeological dig. <laughs> the plan now is we need to go through and get bare metal on all the areas we're going to be working on. So, next step is sandblasting. We need to go in and basically clean all this floor up. We'll get the hammer drill in and rip all of the paint off the floor as much as we can the rest so it's um, down to clean metal but sandblasting with our wet sandblaster creates a lot of uh, water and also wet sand to deal with so rather than shovel it out of the way we're going to be cutting a hole in the sand so that we can just use that as a drain and we'll weld it back up when we're finished and when we say hole we don't mean a big hole yeah it's only like three just, feet by you're three thinking feet. somewhere around here right yeah only the a, lowest point yeah only a couple of feet by a couple of feet <laughs> not a big one yeah <laughs> sort of something like that yeah ish ish yeah. I'll make sure that he doesn't cut any more than that. Ish. You're only allowed as much as you actually need. <laughs> <laughs> I better not leave because if I, I come back, there'll be like a gaping hole out the side. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're in platform, darling. With a ladder and an access. Door, so <laughs> we're working on it, we get in and out of I'm really excited because I actually thought that was much worse. It's so cool. It's just a little bit of tidying work. It's not bad. I'm so excited. <laughs> Relieved. You know, after having chased uh, rust a little bit around this boat, that was the one I thought was the worst, so cool.
pretty sure the hole that I'm going to cut in here is going to go into the inside of the spons. Here's the spons and, or rubbing strip on the side of brew peg. Because we knew this job was coming, we haven't closed that up. The water and the sand can come in from the galley, run along and drop down into the barrel below. On the side of HMS Illustrious here, we have to go and figure out where we're putting this hole. I think I've just figured it out. Look at the sponson, right? At the front of there, you've got a well that leads off to the front of the boat. That looks like it's basically going right the way down the sponson and then coming out of the top, just there somewhere, just below where Jess is. And then it works its way along to the intersection where the um, wing has that curve in it. Right, now I think I know how they built the boat. We're gonna plasma a hole on the inside um, basically blasting into the centre of that sponson at the weld. That steel's all rusty, so we're going to be replacing it with new steel anyway. So there's no, doesn't matter if we make a small hole, figure out how much clearance we got, and then keep going and make that hole bigger and bigger until it's as big as we can get while it's still inside that sponson. You may not have noticed, but the uh, shovel's gone, got a little bit more room. So um, we figured it out. This weld is the middle of the sponson, right? Yeah. And we'll have a look inside what's there, and if we see a bit of Swanson on the other side of it and not open air, we know we're in the right location. If we see daylight, something's gone wrong. <laughs> and if we are in a little cave in there, yeah, <laughs> little work. Swanson cave, we can go a little bit bigger, because yeah. that's how we want to get rid of the sand, we want it to drive out through the Swanson. Yeah, and the re there's a reason why we're doing that, so some people will probably wonder why on earth we're trying to get the sand into the Swanson. Um, it's because that corner of the um, galley is the lowest point in the in this room, so all of the water and sand and everything is going to run to there. Now, if we cut it above the sponson, it's going to be about two or three inches above the the bottom of the um, steelwork there. If we cut it below the sponson, it's going to be in the freezer room. So there's just no physical way we have it, to cut it. It's into just the about location, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So if this is the if this is the, let's hypothesise yeah. roughly, this is kind of the middle. It's inside the sponson. Yeah, yeah. If you go down, it's, it's there's no room. You've got to you've got to stay inside this room. Yeah. If you go up, you're going to be too high to get it because it's water and sand. It's all going to go to the lowest point. Yeah. So, yeah. really, we're going to have to level that out. Yeah. We? So I'm going to actually so fill it that up with there. Um, sicker so that that plate doesn't leak. I think from that weld, you can see that weld line there. I think from there down to the floor is is where I can do it. I think. This is a pneumatic needle gun. In this case, it has a chisel on it. It doesn't have the little needles, but this is what a lot of people refer to when they're saying to us, why don't you use this type of tool to like attack the rust and what have you on brew peg? This is what we use. I am using two sets of air protection because this is quite literally like bashing a massive steel drum. It looks like the bulk of the rust is basically in a U shape and it's where they used to have the old uh, dinette, so there was seating right the way around here, and there was a table basically bolted down onto where those rust patches are there. So um, yeah, we pretty much just need to go around where the where the seats were joint to the steel. That's where the worst of the rust is.
There we have it. Using the one grit sander, we are able to smash that off in about 20 minutes. So we haven't taken all the floor off, we don't need to. So what we need to do is make sure that any areas that had rust, whereas this sort of stuff here was bubbling up, is removed because the sandblaster will come in next and just basically rip all this down to white metal. So you can see I've missed a bit here, right? So you've got this flaking, bubbling paint. Comes away pretty easily. So this red stuff is the red lead paint that was original. So this is like nearly 50 years old, this paint. And it's amazing stuff. It sticks like you wouldn't believe. But see, right beside it, you've got rust and you've got discoloration over here and so on. That's where um, the paint has broken away. Water, mold, rust, whatever has got in behind. And it's discolored the paint and the steel. So that's how we know, it doesn't matter what we do, unless we sandblast that, the paint's not gonna stick to it properly. So that's why we have to rip it off. So we've gone right the way along as well, down the edge. So there's a couple of areas, down in, right down in the corner here, it's pretty thin. So I'm not gonna replace that steel, I'm gonna pad weld it. Um, I will do some checks on this stuff here, because this is a wee bit dimpled in as well. I don't know if I'm fully happy with that. And then over there you can see I've gone through in a couple of spots where it's just basically gone too thin and I need to deal with that. So that'll be rusting on both sides because that's inside the sponson. So there's no paint on the outside of the steel. So it's bare steel on both sides. Normally that's not a problem um, with the bare steel on the outside because the oxygen um, never gets refreshed. So once the rust uses up all the oxygen, it doesn't carry on rusting. Um, but other than that, where, where the rust was pretty bad, a couple of spots just down in there you can see, it's gone through as well. Um, and then it sort of dimpled it quite a bit in there. That's the bathroom on the other side of there. So unfortunately, if I weld that, I'm gonna kill all the paint in the bathroom. We will be redoing the bathroom soon because the paint we used in there didn't really work. Um, that was Joden Hardtop Ultra. Wasn't probably the best paint to use for that area. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That's probably more my application than the paint. Over here, you can see it's sort of, quite a bit of steel has gone in some places. And that's just long term, not really being able to get to it and maintain it. Um, they pro the original owners probably didn't even know that this was rusting um, and it's only ever when you rip the boats apart like we have that you can actually find that level of detail. So we know what we're working with now. It's nowhere near as bad as I thought. But we'll get in now and we'll start sandblasting it out. Oh, before I forget, I have to hammer drill this room too. This entire floor is coming down to bare steel because there's just too many areas that this floor is letting go. The paint's not holding onto the steel. So this floor will be basically ripped apart down to be a steel and then paint it again. But that's a job for another day when I've got slightly more sandwiches in me. What we need to do is cut this hole much bigger. There's a couple of bits of rust over on this side that have gone through. We're actually just gonna replace that whole panel. So we're gonna cut the hole bigger and that allows us to push the sand out easier when we're sandblasting because that's what's happening next. But we've made a slightly bigger hole. That's gonna be the drain for our sand. We're gonna flow out the slide and into the scupper and then out the side of the boat. This is a piece of steel that we cut out. So this is the side that you won't ever see. This is inside the scupper. And you can see the rust is... It hasn't started on this side, it started on the other side. Um, quite hot, it's only a glove on. Look at it. There we go. You can sort of see how bad that rust is from this side. So we know that there's no problem inside the scupper based on the fact that it started on this side. Right, playtime. So we've hammer drilled all of the paint off in the areas that we need to focus on. And you can sort of see there's a bit of corrosion and rubbish to deal with. The paint itself down here is probably, I don't know, two millimetres thick. It's fairly thick paint. Um, but underneath there's a lot of corrosion and rust and crap that needs to be dealt with. So we won't necessarily know how bad this is until we get it back down to bare steel. We've got probably 90% of an idea at the moment, but we want to obviously get it right down so that we can make a real informed judgment. There's some places that we already know we're going to be replacing over in the corner where we've cut that big slot out that was buggered We're going to be putting new steel in also where those two little dots of um, Adhesive are down there. They were just little pinholes that we've sealed up so that we don't put lots of sand into the tank That's behind there um, and then we're going to cut those out and replace it with new steel uh, Yeah, so the plan is to basically get it back to white metal and then make a pretty informed judgment about what we're going to do as a repair Our wee pressure washer it's done a lot of work, but we're really struggling to get it started. We've tried all sorts of stuff, and um, the only way I can actually get it running is by stripping the carby all down and taking the air cleaner off like this. And um, I've cleaned the carby out, dropped the fuel bowl a couple of times to just clear out the fuel. But by putting, you know, straight um, meths down here, just you know, squirting it gently down there, is the mo I can get it to start and run and carry on. But the second I stop spraying meths, it stops running. Um, I thought it might have been old fuel. I've drained the fuel system completely, put new fuel in. Didn't make any difference so i thought hang on just slow down 
step back, give the whole thing a wash. So um, my plan is to basically just clean everything out and just sort of see if we can start from scratch and, and give it a clean up, see if we can make it better. There we go, it took a lot of scrubbing, but after all of that, it's, it, honestly, it looks like a new machine. Like It's unrecognizable from what it was before. I reckon it'll start now. So the compressor's running in the background, that's the noise that you can hear. And I tried to start this. This is water blaster number two. So bear that number in mind, it could be more important later. Finally we got this thing started, it took a lot of mucking around. However there was a problem with the governor, every time I pulled the trigger, the RPM would disappear and the machine just wouldn't make any pressure. So I've lost about two and a half days of productive work on the boat because of sandblasting. Um, so our old sandblaster, Stan Lee, this guy here, he completely died. Um, just could not get it running and that's, that happens these things wear out we give them a hard time um, so we went into town and got a replacement and that had a whole bunch of problems um, it was defective so we took it back got a warranty claim got another one and that was doing a whole bunch of different problems um, same brand same model everything like that so we, obviously a dud batch or something but it was having a whole bunch of issues as well that were terminal um, so we took that back and got a second refund um, we've ordered a better machine but we still have to sandblast so in the meantime we've got a, um, a higher unit so this is one of those moments that's overwhelming and stressful. I have a very limited amount of time to get the sandblasting done and the machine decides I am not going. <laughs> hard week. This is a hard week, a hard couple of weeks really. Yeah. And Dane's sort of really frustrated and so he's sitting there with an ice pack. I know I'm going back to work next week. I know I've got this much time to get this job, this <laughs> horrific job done and my tools are not working. And it's hard, eh? It's hard. Yeah, it really is hard. So we thought we might just um, show you, you know, these moments because it's these moments that kind of make the project. Make the project really, and how you deal with this moment is how you sort of create your whole week ahead, you know, because it, however you deal with this, carries forward in the week. So. So these are the moments that we kind of like, everything stops. It's just like, we just put like the brakes on. It's like complete brakes on, handbrake goes on. You can't go into gear until we shift our gear in our mind, so. These are the bits that you don't necessarily see Jess. Like, this is this is Jess's superpower, is basically keeping the project <laughs> running when everything stops working. We hired a commercial unit from in town. So it's a 3000 PSI, I don't know, nine horsepower or something like that. But it's pretty powerful. It's a bit of a beast of a thing. However, None of my sandblasting gear is compatible with it, so um, I thought I'd be able to swap over my hoses for their hoses, etc., and just run all my gear. Don't know why it's not working. I think my hoses are probably too narrow, like diameter-wise, it's causing all sorts of weird behaviour for the machine. And as you just saw, that didn't work. Um, <laughs> I had to jimmy that up, and it was still garbage. So I've got a different one from the same hire shop, and I've actually managed to get that one working really well. Oh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so I so it was a less less power. Yeah. So after yeah. after basically three days I might be able to do 10 minutes worth of work. <laughs> God. Literally there's yeah. been practically nothing on the boat but everything else is really good. The next video is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> First go at it, so working way better, just like as it should. But I'll show you, let's throw it down here. So these are the worst bits. So you can kind of see, where you can see dimples like this, and you've got the black inside some of these corrosion bits. That's still rust, so we still have to go down further. But what I normally find is getting a chipping hammer and actually just bashing these out is much faster than trying to blast them out. Um, right the way along here, you can sort of see corrosion along that uh, deck to hull joint. Um, so I'll fill that up, I'm pretty pad about that because it's going to be a lot easier than trying to replace that steel. And then same deal across that joint there, the bulkhead to the deck, that's also a bit 
um, whittled away on the bulkhead side, so I'll pad weld that bulkhead up. Um, but we've still got a wee bit more blasting, but the blaster is working 10 times better. Um, so it's covered in sand and whatnot at the moment. We've sort of gone down this edge here, blasted a little bit of this well that I did years ago um, when we put the beach in. I've still got to go across the top here. Uh, and then obviously get to that lot there, but I reckon probably one more tank of sand and we'll have this room blasted. Um, I want to attack these bits a lot more. I want to really open up these drain holes. So to see over there, that is rusted through. Go right down. There you go. Look at that. Lovely. So I'll probably cut that out actually and just put a new strip in there. Um, and then, yeah, get right in the corner of this guy here a blast. And then also this is a stainless pipe I put in and I never got to blast it. So I sort of chipped it all out and ground it back at the time and it stopped basically any chaos and rust that was happening at the time, but it's still not good enough and I need to give it a bit of a clean up, so we'll do that today with the blaster. But yeah, you can sort of see it's coming up pretty pretty nice. We'll get into it and carry on and get this finished. With a bit of a hose out, it's come up pretty good. So, I'll start on this side. There's still areas that I need to go over, but you can sort of see, there you go, lovely white metal, that's what it comes back like. We still need to go over the bulkhead, so you can see the difference between the um, the white metal at the bottom of the screen there, that's the, um, the deck, and then you can see the bulkhead hasn't had as much blasting and it's sort of dark. Um, it's not as dark as what it looks like on the camera, but it is still dark, so we need to go over a bit more. And you can also see, here the paint sort of flaking away, that's rust underneath that paint and I haven't blasted enough. So I need to go over that as well. Um, around the corner, still got a wee bit more to get in some of these areas around that pipe there, it's a wee bit dark. Along here, still got a bit more on this floor in this area. Um, most of this is pretty good, I was surprised with that, I thought there was less metal than what there is, so that's pretty good. Over here that's come up quite nice right along that, that edge there, that's come up pretty good. Um, now, the bit that we were most concerned about, right up in here. So this is an area that was impossible to maintain before. You had the piece of metal that sort of, I'll come back out here, you had the piece of metal that we cut out of this bit here, and that stopped you being able to easily get up and into there. By cutting it out, we can get right up in there and blast it. We're not going to put it back in. Um, we don't need to. It's not a strength thing, but it just means that we'll be able to um, get in there and really maintain it. What I think's going on is there's a, um, a join here that has never been welded on this side because obviously you can't get up there with a welder. I'm going to weld it this time, um, which means I'll burn a bit of paint off the deck. So I'll get in there and weld that. We'll weld in the new ribs, so from here down, and then also from here, get those welded in. But all in all, um, that's come up pretty good. You can see most of this side is, is done. There's a wee patch over here that needs to be um, blasted off a bit more. And then um, tomorrow we'll go through and we'll just you can sort of see right down here on that white, there's um, bubbly paint. That's rust we need to rip off. So we'll get out that'll only take a few minutes to do. In fact, actually, I don't think that's a lot of rust. I think most of that is um, crappy chlorinated rubber paint falling apart. Uh, but either way, we'll get that ripped off. And we also want to um, sandblast the floor, so we're not going to rip it back to bare steel. What we are going to do is do this. So you hang back about maybe two feet, and you just do a big sort of wide sort of wander across it like this, um, all the way around, and you end up with this real roughed up surface, which is perfect for the next layer of paint to go on. So yeah, a lot of work done, a lot of um, mucking around to get here, but we're finally in a really good spot. So I'm really happy with this. Um, I thought it was going to be worse than it is and also thought it was going to take more to blast out than it did. Oh, 
this morning's job is to get in and have a poke around. What up there? Okay, see that black stuff? That's basically rust that's sitting on top of metal. So I need to get down below that. So the orange colour that you can see there is something that I've blasted and it's just got a bit of surface rust. That's what we want. We want to achieve that. But we have to get all of that sort of stuff. Like you can see, is a good example there. Just crap sitting in the corner. Um, easiest way to do that is get a chipping hammer. Give it the herbs like that. And it breaks it off. It doesn't doesn't take it out fully, but it's enough that the sandblaster will be able to dig through it. We'll get in and finish this off. So we haven't really blasted up in this sort of area here. I've been a bit cautious. This FX15 is the only thing that's stopping water from bucketing down into the room downstairs. It is watertight. It's done its job, but I don't really want to put the sandblaster right up against it because then it won't be watertight. We have the um, rental blaster for one more day, or potentially two days we extend it, but not the cheapest thing in the world. So. Um, I'm going to be going help you for leather to try and get this room finished today and also try and finish this room So at the moment I've got parts the more stuffed into this room I've got to take everything out of it because I ideally want to rip all of the paint off the floor um, So whether that's hammer drill and then blast or blast the whole lot it just depends on what's going to be easiest So yeah, quite a lot of blasting to go um, It's a pretty crappy day as well. It's, um, it's windy and it's raining uh, it's cold which is nice, um, but yeah overall it's a hard slog at the minute. Right so we've had a big clean out and a hose out, so everything's sort of ready to go. Basically what we need to deal with, you can see in this room you've got like spot rust, it just sort of turns up randomly on the floor and then you've got sort of bigger areas where the rust is sort of coming out like that and that's basically paint just not holding onto the floor. So this big area stuff like this flakes pretty easily so what the plan is is go through with the hammer drill and just bash all of that off and that'll come off piece of cake. This sort of stuff here, the paint's holding on quite a bit better and it's the high spots that wear and then you kind of go through it. This stuff will need to be sandblasted so you can sort of see the paint itself is holding relatively well where it's wearing out there. But yeah, we need to go through basically sandblast it out. And then finally, on the wall, I don't know if you can see it or not, but right the way along there, there's, um, I don't know if it's corrosion that's previously been painted over or if there's um, bits of rust that are coming through. Certainly. Down that end there, I can, I can see bubbling up paint, so I know there's rust down there, but I'll probably blast maybe six inches up this wall and just clean that right off. And then, last thing on the list, these um, stainless circles and the stainless pipe and stuff that we welded in the other day, I'll blast all of that so that when we um, paint everything, all of the welds are going to be completely sandblasted and covered as well. Oh, here's a good example. Look at that. See that bubbly crap? That's basically rust under the paint. So again, all the way along this edge here, we'll probably do six inches or so up, maybe eight inches, whatever it is needed to clean off any of the crap. And then up on the deck, that black circle, that's the stainless plate we welded onto the deck. So we'll give that a blast from the underside as well and, and um, make sure that's all cleaned up and painted. All right, finally, this square here, that was part of the wall that we cut out in order to get the world's longest bench, that thing there inside the boat. We physically couldn't fit it through the hallway door over there as it came round. It was basically clipping over here on the wall, so we basically cut the wall out, put the bench in, weld the wall back in. This has been a ludicrously hard job, um, and God, I'm, I'm so chuffed that it's coming to an end. The blasting and stuff is the hardest, but once we've got that blasting done, we can start getting into the paint, but then after that, we can start building the plinths, which I'm really looking forward to. It's woodwork, I know, I'm not a huge fan of woodwork, but I'm really looking forward to getting them done because it's something that I can get really sort of correct, perfect level, all that sort of stuff. My OCD is going to have a field day because it means that our kitchen's going to be like really bang on, no wobbly drawers, none of that rubbish, so yeah, get in there. Like anybody else, I have to make decisions at the start of a work day. Do I go smart casual with the checkered shirt, or do I go with pink for accuracy? Jeez, tough choice. I think we'll go accurate. So we'll just stop for a coffee break. 
And I thought I was going to have to hammer drill most of this off, but you can sort of see with the water blaster itself, right up against that paint, it's ripping all the loose stuff off, and then it's getting under it and kind of pressurizing it up and breaking it off. So you can sort of see there's big flakes of paint and stuff coming off, which is which is actually really awesome. It saves a lot of work if we can do it with a pressure washer. So I'll go through and basically blast the whole floor. Um, I've only done sort of this corner down here at this stage, but I'll go through and rip off the rest of it with the pressure washer, and then we'll sort of um, stand back and sand it with the, with the blaster. So that's where we come back about maybe a foot from the surface and just rough the, what the paint that's holding on well, we'll rough that up really good. And then, yeah, any bare steel like this, we'll blast that back down to white metal. So what you can see, the floor here, we've basically sanded it with the pressure washer with our sand detachment. Um, if you stand back, if you bring the nozzle back about a foot from the surface, you get a really easy sand like this. What we are finding is stuff like this, like it's just a black piece of flooring, but see how that paint's flaking off it? When I hit something like that, it starts opening up, and that's why you've got these big groups of bare steel over here. I have to just keep following it back until it's no longer opening up and then you end up like this where the edge gets feared back in and what you're left with basically is paint that won't let go that's sanded and any loose stuff comes off and is, is done so you can still see there's a bit more to go here because you can see the edge is quite pronounced um, over there you can see there's a piece that's a big flaky bit that has to come off so most of that's probably got a bit of I don't know garbage underneath rust or something that we need to deal with so we get one shot at this we can't do this again so like we have to get it right the first time so that's why we're just kind of blasting quite deep in and in an ideal world you take all of this back to bare steel but we can't um, just because we don't have the equipment or sand or you know time etc to do it but we can get it to a stage where um, yeah where it's it's basically going to last 20 years sort of thing you can see that on the door how messy the job is yeah it needed is. it clean anyway <laughs> <laughs> Inside the calm serenity of sandblasting internally to Brew Peak here, outside it is chaos. It's um, blowing about 30 knots and, well not fully, sometimes it's 15 knots, but it's uh, sideways rain and I'm going to show you a front about to approach us. Right over the back can you see the white wall of weather? All day we've been having weather approach the boat from that side. Um, and it's actually warmer inside being pelted with cold uh, water blaster water than it is outside which is a rare thing for us in Australia. Jess just about had a, um, a flood situation going on here. She, she's, while I've been sandblasting all the sand and water, the sand gets sort of stuck behind that towel that we've got over there, and then the water piles through here. She fires it into buckets, and then heaves it out the side of the boat. We had a drama today. We thought we had some enough dry sand to, to finish this room and do that room, uh, because we've got the, the water blaster for the sandblasting in back. In a couple nine. of hours at nine, yeah. So we, we can't dry any sand at the moment because it's way too wet. It's raining every 10 minutes. There's, there's rainstorms sort of coming through. So we, there's no way we can dry anything. We haven't been able to for probably five days. Um, so we've been trying to pre-dry everything, get it ready. And we had it sitting under the boat thinking it was good to go. But there must have been holes in the bottom of our buckets because water seeped up from the bottom. Mm. Um, so we don't have any. We have uh, yeah. about that much left in this. Right, we're out of sand. So that's kind of us done for the day in terms of blasting. 
Um, probably for about a week, I'd say, we won't be able to blast again. The new water blast is about 10 days away, seven days, something like that. Um, so we're not gonna be able to do any blasting until we get that. And we don't have any dry sand, it's probably gonna take four or five days to actually get a decent amount of dry sand. So yeah, that's done for blasting for a while. Um, but we'll give everything a clean down. We can start putting paint around places. We can start doing a lot of welding and also start uh, getting the plinths built for the um, all the cabinets that go in the galley. We're all fogged up. Yeah. So this was recording up on the other side of the room. Look at that lens. Look how much fog is sitting right in the middle of where it's supposed to be looking. So we need to get in here to go through and get rid of all of the dust, get rid of the sand off so we don't trace it through the boat and so on. Um, but we need to actually get in here and start sanding all of the walls. We've got to put some paint on these walls. Um, there's some engineering to do in here and put some rib nuts in and some stainless walls. But the rib nuts are for the stainless panels to hold against the walls. The rib nuts are the stainless panels to hold against the walls. Tonight. Whoa. 